Amen. Amen. If you believe that after today, someone is you, that this month of November that you will testify yes. that that is that is your immediate need, yes. that God is going to shift you into the world, yes. into a place that is better than what you have. Subdue them today in Jesus' name. Yeah. You will never complain again in Jesus' name. Yeah. But I will take you as about to hear your word. As our someone today is talking about God's intention. Our your intention in our lives is for us to be better than we were. Your intention in our lives is for you to give us our expected end. It's when your expectation in our lives is for us to rejoice, not to be crying. Because when we are crying, you are crying. When we have problems, you are having problems. When you are worried, you are worried because of the Lord. You love us so much that make you send us for your holy begotten Son. For the love is great. Father, we appreciate you. We thank you for loving us first. Sending your Son to come and die for you. Father, look upon the cross and forgive any sin that would make you not to forgive us. Reveal to me this morning, sin is too much. Sin are too much. Rot is too much. Father, have mercy. That sin that is making you to be angry. Father, touch them to stop it. Let them come to Christ. I know that you are angry, but look upon your son, Jesus Christ. Have mercy and pardon them. I don't know them. I don't know that they are provoking you here. Have mercy and forgive them. Touch them. Let them have a encounter with the Holy Ghost to come to Christ. So that you'll be happy up with them. Father, look upon the, the whole rot you're supposed to have on us. You have put it on Jesus on the cross. Father, don't be angry with us again. And they're going to hear this word. Forgive them. Let the word of God are going to hear fall on a good ground, not on a not, not on a withered ground. Let it bear good fruits. Let there be doers of the word, not only hearers. Remove every stony heart. Give them the heart of belief. Remove every heart of unbelief. Remove every heart that makes them to forget the word of God. Give them the heart of belief. Put your spirit in them so that they will be maintaining the word of God as you are going to bless them after this sermon. Let them also be blessed in the world to come. The most important day, the great and the rapture day. We are going to be just on the crowd. Give everybody here grace to make it in this world and make it on the world to come. In Jesus' name we decree. Amen. Amen. Our topic today is talking about God's intention. God's intention. God's intention in our lives. There is nobody God created that God is intending for that person to be suffering or intending for that person to be crying. But we are the cause of our problems. The cause started from the first creatures, Adam and Eve. God created us and said, choose life and death. Human being that chose death. Don't eat this fruit, that is why problem comes. So God cannot help it. It's only through prayers. When you pray to God, then God will forgive you. When you pray to God, God will pardon you. So God's intention is for us to enjoy. He showed them the Garden of Eden, showed them everything, he handed them over, they choose death. Now Jesus Christ is taken out and came and make us not to be suffering again. When you are in Christ Jesus, you have direct access. That's why the Bible says, let us go boldly to the throne of grace. And obtain two things. That's what he said. Obtain favor and what? Mercy. And there's another English there. In the time of what? Need. Simple. 
Because you will need. It doesn't even depend on Christ Jesus, you will not need. Let us go boldly, boldly in Christ Jesus. To the throne of grace is a throne. Throne of grace and of self, favor and mercy. Mercy means grace, power, and favor in the time of need. So when you are in the time of need, God's intention for you is to come straight, come boldly, and collect mercy. God is going to give you the grace. If you have not been going boldly to the throne of grace, you are afraid or panic, God will give you the grace. After this, you will be going boldly. You know that God commanded, in the time of need, come straight and collect mercy and favor. And you are going to jump mercy and favor this week in Jesus' name. Amen. So I'm quickly going to open to the book of Psalm 66, 12. Psalm 66, 12 says, But thou cause men to ride over our heads. These so are talking about Israel life. Men to ride over their heads when they disobeyed God. Because during the time of Old Testament, whenever the Israelites disobey God, when the God with them, he handed them over to their enemies. Enemies begin to torture them. So when he handed them over to Pharaoh in Egypt, they were tortured under Pharaoh it's because of sin. And then the Lord said, So when thou hast caused men to ride over our heads, that is Pharaoh and the Egyptians using them as slaves. We went through fire, fire in the hands of Pharaoh. When Pharaoh was torturing them because of sin, God handed them over to Pharaoh. And through water, through water means crossing the rest. No, you have to when they cross the rest. Sea. Fire, through water, they cross the rest. Sea. And but that brought us into a wealthy place. This is the final intention of God for the Israelites to bring them into a wealthy place. But what made them to be suffering in the hands of Pharaoh was because of disobedience. The only thing that makes us to suffer is disobedience. It might not be our own disobedience, it might be our own disobedience. It might be from the ones of our forefathers or the ones we did. When you come to Christ and forsake, the Bible says when you come to Christ, you forsake. It's not I'm in Christ, you continue in sin. When you come to Christ, you forsake. Because the final intention of God is a worthy place. Where is that worthy place? Promised land. When they cross the Red Sea and enter the promised land, it's flowing with milk and honey. A worthy place that is better than where they were before when they were in the hands of Pharaoh. So God's intention for your life is for you to be better than you were. As you are now, his intention for you to move to the next level, to be better than how you are now. Because when they go when in a worthy place, blood flowing with milk and honey, it was better than when they were in the hands of Pharaoh, suffering as a slave. Egyptians uses them as slaves. They were suffering with hard labor. I don't think they pay them, they just give them food. Because there was a time they were in the wilderness, they were attacking Moses. Why did you bring us a lot of Egypt to so suffer here? We, 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 it's better they, they, we, they are with Pharaoh and be suffering in the hands of Pharaoh because Pharaoh was giving them, giving them everything they need, but they are suffering. So Egyptians are the people that are supposed to be working for Israelites. The Israelites are working for them because of sin. So many of you people that are supposed to be under you, you are under them because of what sin, because of what disobedience. But finally, but God's intention is not for a child of God to be under someone that is not a child of God. God's intention for you to rule. But not knowing the word of God, not knowing what to do, makes you to be under people, under somebody that is supposed to be under you. But finally, God brought them into a worthy place. That is the intention of God. For you to get into a worthy place. Nobody, God's intention is to be poor. God doesn't want you to pop. God doesn't want to be lacking anything for you to come into a worthy place. I don't know many of you now have suffered a lot. Fire. They went through fire. They went through sea. But today, God will give you favor. You are coming out from that fire in the name of Jesus. Amen. You will come into a worthy place. Anywhere God made that He will land you, that you will be, be worthy for you. Many people have different things in mind. When God give it to me now, it will be like um, it's, it's, a, it's a sign of worthy, worthy blessing. To me, sign of wet. I don't know. Some people say it's money. Some people's heart is uh, pepper. So many things, many things. So anything that God will give you, it will make you to be in a windy place. God will give you this much in Jesus' name. Yeah. That's what Bible says, Jeremiah 29, 11. Our, I know, so, that our intention, uh, God's intention is not for you to suffer, but to give you your future. You expected end. But your future will be a good thing, not a bad Because when you are afraid Jesus, your future will not be bad. So that's why when God is giving you your expected end, He equip you with things that will surround you so that the enemy will not battle. Because you know our enemy is who? Devil. That He always battles people's destiny. His work is battling your gift. You know? Why God created you? 
when you never know it, you will never see any attack. But immediately you find out why you came to this world, you see attack started. Why you were sent? But when you did be like Mumu, that will not disturb you. Imagine you come out and say, God say you be this. You start to fight at that time, devil will come. Devil will come to attack you. That's why God surround you, equip you with ammunition. That's why I say no weapon that function against you shall prosper. Devil will come with many weapons to stop you on the way. That's why God says that we be keep you as the apple of his eye. Because as we are quickly going to open to the first of all, to the book of Psalm 17, 8. This is when David was praying for God to keep him as the apple of his eye. I don't know whether many of you know the meaning of apple of God's eye. He said, keep me as the apple of the eye, hide me under the shadow of thy wings. David prayed this prayer. And it's not the book prayer of Moses, are God talking to Moses. Then when you finally go to the book of Zechariah 2, 8, then you will see what God says here after Moses, uh, after David prayed this prayer for God to keep him as the apple of his eye. Then Zechariah 2, 8 says, I had the reproach of glory, had, said, had he sent me into the nation which plundered you, for he that touches you, do what? Touches the apple of what? His eye. And who is God talking about? Jerusalem. And who is Jerusalem? Me and you. We are the spiritual Israelites. Which have read before in the word of God. Here we are, the Bible gave you authority to become a spiritual Israelite. Those that are like Christ Jesus are Israelites. If you can remember someone, <laughs> there was a day we read the quotation here. Yes. Not all that are Israelites are Israelites. What of God said, so those that are in Christ are Israelites. And we are in Christ. Yes. He said, whoever that touches you, touches the apple. Why God? He said, I don't, do you know that devil will touch you as you're struggling to fight your dreams, to fight your vision, to fight your blessings? He must attack. And how can God tell you that you know what the apple of apple of the eye is? This black thing you're seeing in the center. Here. Can you allow anybody to touch it? No. This center. And if anybody in the mark like the first thing of a close eye, even a new born baby that open make your eye near the eye, but if you close it, with it. when God said He that touches you. So you think that God will allow somebody? You will, will you allow somebody to touch that black thing? That is the apple of the eye. Who that touches you? The Bible says, My people perish for lack of knowledge. Not using the word of God. If you know the word of God and if you use them, it works. You tell God, Your pepper, your vision, whoever touches my pepper, touches my vision, touches my dream. Touch is what God has handed over to me. It's touching the apple of God's eye. Because if somebody wants to touch his eye, you, if you have enough, you will kill the person to make sure that the eyes, the finger didn't cross him. And how, that was the whole time we read in the Bible. We have many places where that describe how the eyes of God is. Who can tell me? That means that is what? Fire! Okay, who likes fire? Who not the fear fire? How can God keep you an apple of it? And devil will near you. This is keeping the apple of it. You have to be maintained by holy life. Not in sin. In Christ Jesus. Then he will keep you, keep everything about you. As the apple of his eye. And the eye of Jesus, the Bible says, is fire. So when it's fire, enemy will not enter. Devil will not enter. This is how the things God used to equip you because of your expected end. His intention for you to move to your worthy place. From today, everything about you, your paper, your documents, your health, anything you're doing, God is going to keep everything and your family as the apple of his eye from today in Jesus' name. Amen. And at the same time, God is promising again in the same Zechariah 2.5. That's not that thing he's promising. This is that equipping. This to encourage you that devil cannot do anything. But don't let him, don't close your mouth. Be praying. Be praying. Very, very important. The same Zechariah 2 5 says, For I set Jehovah will be around her. Who around her? The same Israelite. We. A wall of what? Fire. Round the world about. And now we be what again? Glory in the midst of. Stop. When God said we be fire, you. You be a fire around her, but who will be near you? You want to say, God be a wall of fire around me. He said, as much as he says, as much as he says, so they don't so surround his people. You know how much, uh, very high, much as soldiers are very big. It's the same, he said, you will be a water fire around you. Okay, when God's way is around you, who will touch your what God handed? What to touch your business, your dream? Nothing. You hear it today, you will not use it to pray to God. That's what you have. 
If we have members here that every salon, you write it and use the fire that we see. We see changes in your life. My people perish for the purpose of saying, Remind me of my words. Let me to use the word of God to pray. Stick with answers today. God will be a wall of fire around you in Jesus' name. Amen. Around your happiness, around everything you're looking for in the name of Jesus. At the same time, I'm back to say it again. That is another, another thing God says. The people that are thinking is only for men of God. You see, touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. That is a horror 550. But many people are thinking that this thing is only pastors. Touch not by, are you not anointed? Open to the book of John 15, 15 to 16, to see whether you are anointed. It's for everybody. When you are saying, Christ Jesus, and you are doing the will of God, he said, touch not, and do my prophets no harm. Anointed and prophets. No longer will I call you servants. Jesus was saying this in John 15. No longer will I call you servants. Because... Servants don't know the what master is doing because for Lord, for, for Lord knowing not what his Lord doing, he says servants don't know why Jesus said this. Anything God Jesus hear from God, he will tell people, he will tell the disciples, he will tell his followers, he will tell people follow him. He said no, I can't call you servants again because servants cannot know what the master is doing. But Jesus said that, but for now I have called you friends because it's a friend you can tell something. You cannot see me or Ghana be telling your servants secrets. He hear from your God, but he be telling a servant. Jesus, because Jesus was hearing from us. He said, now we are no more servants. We are friends. That's why he said, what a friend we have in Jesus. From now you are friends. For all this I have of my father, I have made no, 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 I said, I have made all known unto you, no secret. And there is something he said again. After telling them they have revealed all the secrets to him, he said, yes, did, yeah, ye did not choose me, but I chose you. Jesus said that they didn't choose him. They don't want him, but he wants you. By force, God, Jesus wants you by force, so the devil will not tamper with your life. And what again did he say? I have chosen you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit, that your fruit should abide, and whatever you ask in my father's name, he will give it. Go to, open to the book of King um, uh, who has it in King Version? read it, read the verse 16 of it, continue, leave it, leave, don't remove it, leave the 16 of it in King Version. King James Version, John 15, 16. Who has it? Bring my microphone and give the person to read. John 15, 16. People are the back. Stop discussing. This is summer time. Please, 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 please. Please. Uh-huh. Come on, I am choosing you. I'm not telling you that they may go. Concern afresh. Yeah, I have chosen me. Yeah, I have not chosen but, me. Yeah, I have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. I'm not telling you that they may should go and bring forth fruit. Praise the Lord. He said, I have chosen you and I have ordained you. This is what I want to hear finished. He said, He has ordained you, which means your Christ Jesus, your death is that touch not my anointed, it's not only for men of God. It's for everybody. He said, I have chosen you and I have ordained you. Who ordained you? Jesus. Everybody that this one is not only to the disciples. People, all people in Christ. All the believers in Christ. He said, I have chosen you, I have ordained you. And he said again, here this verse was saying appointed. King James verse was saying, I ordained you that you should go and bear fruit. Everybody. And he said again that your fruit should abide, that anything you ask the Father in my name, he'll give it to you. That I will then go and bear fruit. What are the fruit? That fruit, that's what should be next someone when you go off for the John 15 from 1 to 3, you know the meaning of fruit. When you don't have fruit in heaven, you are not in here. Fruit is when you are doing what God wants. That's why Bible said there. Yeah, John 15, 1. God is the husband man, Jesus is the branch. We are, Jesus, Jesus is the true vine, and we are the branches. That's another sum up. When God comes, Jesus standing like this, three. The branches, we. God fight, try to find fruit in your own branch. Nothing, he will cut it. Then when he find fruit, he will collect it, preserve it for you, Make it neat for you to bring more. And when you don't have fruit in heaven, you have nothing. You and you pray one year, you don't get anything. You don't get anything. Many things can be as a fruit to you. There are people when God comes there, to the whole people of this world, Jesus standing as a tree. Everybody, died. but the problem, do you have fruit? When God said, Come and us, he cut it. How do you bear fruit? Your prayers, holy life, everyone has different types. There, there are the fruit you will bear when you're prayerful. There are one you pay when you do fasting, when you where we are giving offering, sowing seeds, helping in the house of God, many things. Coming to church, singing, 
That's right. When you God comes and does it, he cuts it. And those trees, the work of those trees is whenever you ask something from God, through that fruit, you get answer. That's why it says, when you go and do what? Go and bear fruit. And when that fruit, what will that fruit do for you? That whatever you ask, shall be done. So I don't know many of you, whether your branches, some of you, your fruits, God, if you've even seen anything, God is going to give you the grace. For there will be many fruits in your branches in Jesus' name. Because it will make you when you pray. Because every time I'm, I'm conscious of that fruit. That's why Bible says, think if we do that, that think earthly is earthly. You that think carefully is heavenly. Every time I think that fruit, then I'll be, I'll be checking myself whether the fruits are many and what you make me to know is the life, your spiritual life, your prayer life, you make it to know whether you have fruit. So God will make you to give you the grace to be spiritual sensitive in Jesus' name. Amen. So God says, touch not my anointed. From today you begin to stay it. Bible said in Revelation 5.10, no, I didn't put it, that you are kings and priests. Can a priest be a priest without that then? No. Revelation 5 just say you are Christ and priest, you are shared on death. So before God calls you a priest, you have been ordained. So touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. You are involved. So you have to say, well, touch not my dreams, touch not my pepper, touch not everything belongs to me. Because Jesus says in the book of John 15, 16, that he, Jesus, has ordained me. And you know that devil fears Jesus Christ. Jesus has ordained me, and same Jesus told me in Revelation 5 10, that I am a priest. Use the word of God and make the vessel resist the devil. Is it he will flee? We will why that will not flee your what you are doing because you don't use the word of God. You use the word of God to receive resist, resist him today. From today, you will not see devil on your way in the name of Jesus. Amen. And wait in your dream. You have to have patience. Quickly when you open to the final, open to the book of Genesis 15, 20. You have to have be having patience. All things work together for good for those that love God. If you open the book of Genesis, this is talking about Joseph. When the brothers saw Joseph and put him inside the well, thinking that Joseph was dead. But Joseph wasn't dead. When the Egyptians came and saw him, and they rescued him, and they told that they did Joseph bad. They didn't know that they did Joseph good. What did Joseph tell them? What did Joseph say to them? Joseph said, in Genesis 52, he said, As for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good. He was telling the brothers when they finally. You know, he was the governor. They came to collect food. They didn't know that they brought that, 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 that he was Joseph, their brother. At the end, with their father, when they finally find out that that was Joseph, they were crying because they remember how they went and threw Joseph inside the well, thinking he's dead. He was dead before. So Joseph said, You meant it evil, but God meant it good. From there, he went to Egypt and become governor. And this two, this one that we are farming in Israel. And this man went to Egypt to beg for food. And God was Joseph was the governor. And they didn't know that even is their brother. They lost them. Recognize them. Recognize the father. Recognize all of them. He told them, God and was the last brother that time did Benjamin. They went and brought Benjamin. The dad Joseph declared to them that he was Joseph. They were crying. He welcomed them. So when Joseph was saying that, it was bad for you, bad, but to him is good. For bring it for he said, go to bring it to pass as this day to serve much people alive. Then they have used him to serve people. So when you're on your vision, you will be meeting meeting many things, but all this count it for good. Don't mean everything you meet on the way for bad. Just let them they meet it for bad. But he said to, for God is good. Certain problems when you quickly go to Romans 8 28, certain problems you meet for the road. Yes. When you can't all of them bad, it's best you to be discouraged. When you go to Romans 8 28, he say, And we know them that love God. All things work together for what? Good. So anything you meet, don't count it bad. You not try to make your prayer. You know, why God brings this potential? Those that love God. All things. So that when you fall into trouble, don't be catching it as a problem. Make your prayer to divert that problem. This is because of this thing happening. It's good. It's good. Because they meant it for bad for most children. For God is good. So don't make that problem to know that that it is bad. That everything you make, whether you make it, when you divert it to be good, it will work for you. Yes. For Joseph, it was good for him. But for the brother, it was evil. But it worked for him. So when you divert it, it will work for you the way that. Yes. Because he said, all things work together to for good. Even to them that love according to them that love God, all things work together for good to them that are called according to his purpose. Not, you know, some people don't put to them that love God. 
Some people only say, all this was not all this. You cannot carry a gun and begin to shoot people and got their money. You can't say all this was there. Or you can't stand on the street. Somebody will carry you one night and give you 100 euro. You see this for good. No, not all this was for good. Or you went to the office and put 200 naira. They write you to write 20,000. You add one zero. It becomes true. No. He said to them that love God. Only not to everybody in the world that all this was for good. Only to them that do what? Love God. Because when you love God, you will not like to use. You will not like to use Arab to get money. You will not like to be starting on the road to get money. You will like to add one zero onto the 20,000. So to them that love, because when you love God, things that are working for you will be doing this as a Christian. You will not do tell something that you make God back. So people that are using the quotation, it's not for everybody. It's for only believers. Because when you love God, you are in Christ Jesus. Because there was a time with this someone here that when you don't, you are not in Christ Jesus. God is angry with the person. So today, I'm going to stand up. God is going to give you the grace. Anything that you experience now, you're thinking it bad. Try to divert it good now. Stand up. It's going to work. Anything. Any position you are now. 